it's nice to be here. Um, it's very good uh, to have these two presentations uh, before, because what I'm going to do now is to talk a bit about how can we understand these figures, how can we understand them. And I would like, my main message is that it's not a black box. It's not sort of a mystery. We know quite a lot about the processes behind these figures, because in, in the field of gender and organization studies that has been going on for 25, 30 years now, we have done quite a lot of research in many organizations, not of course only in cultural or film industries, but in many kinds of organizations. And I think it's important to, to say that we know quite a lot about the processes behind. And why is this important? It's because if you want to change then it's important to understand and analyze these figures, this monitoring, uh, because then you will see that it's about structures, it's about power, it's about uh, culture, organizational culture. Uh, but if you don't want to change, you will say that it's just about nature. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as you hear nature or bio you know, biology or differences in that kind of essential way, you will know that there is resistance to change. But I would say from research, we get a lot, we have a lot of knowledge. It's not a black box, it's not a mystery. Uh, but we could make a mystery film maybe about it. Uh, it's like in the crime section, we should have more <laughs> films, I think, about this. So what I, I want to do very shortly is sort of a crash course into gender and organization and say just a few words about structure, culture, and then I'm talking about organizational culture today, not national, and also a few words uh, about workforce change, how we can change this, how we can challenge this. And my background is that I'm in, in this field of research uh, at the Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm, but I'm really into sort of from the business school in Stockholm. So I've been doing um, empirical work in a lot of different fields of, of, so this is sort of general concepts, general theory, uh, going from a lot of organizations. But I've also studied the Swedish film industry, and I've been working with several projects, change projects, where we actually try to do something about these figures. Uh, I've been working with a program for women directors in Sweden, but now I'm working in with another project, uh, both research and development project, where we have groups of both men and women in film working for change, so to speak. So uh, I have a, a bit uh, knowledge also about this particular uh, field. But I will speak more broadly because it's sometimes it's good to see that I mean, it's not only the film industry that have these problems. Almost all industries have these problems. These are general structures that are part of society. But of course, the consequences are very big in, with film because it's, it's about, uh, I mean, it's a democratic issue as well. What do we let our young children, girls, and et cetera, see and, and take part of when it comes to film? It's very, very crucial. Uh, when it comes to sort of basic uh, human rights, I would say. So I would just want to say something first before I start, and is that I know that this kind of uh, issues, gender and gender equality, diversity, whatever we call it, uh, often uh, makes people feel, you know, discomfortable. It, it, it's not, it's uneasy. And I have been doing quite a lot of research also about why do people feel that it's kind not very nice to listen to. Maybe you feel very calm that are in the room now, but if you feel a bit distressed, I will, you know, name it. <laughs> uh, it often creates discomfort, so I'm very used to that. And there are uh, quite a few uh, uh, explanations from that. First of all, it's often connected to sort of negative connotations. Uh, there is uh, this general idea that if we don't talk about these things, they won't exist. We shouldn't monitor, you know. You are so negative doing these reports because it's... And I think this is interesting. How can we not name, if we don't start here, we can never change 
I mean, it's really crucial to be able to see these are the figures, but what can we do to change them? That's the next step. So it's not to sort of get stuck there. But there's quite a lot of these um, ways of thinking that uh, creates uh, resistance. But there's also uh, uh, some gendered, typical gendered reactions. And uh, we, when we start with men, the category of men, men often feel discomfort because they feel that they are being accused, that we have all these figures and somehow we, we want to find the guilty party, so to speak. And if you feel that you're being accu accused or if there's a guilt issue, you won't be uh, feeling invited to this kind of work for change. And we can see it in the room right now, <laughs> if we look around. And it's very, very important to say that it's not on an individual level. This is about structures, and we are all part of these structures. Both men and women do and make these structures and reproduce them. And we have to find out how we can do it differently. And, and it's the same with uh, the category of men, of course, that they are sort of part of structures that they are reproducing, but women are as well. Uh, so I think it's often uh, important to say to men that this is not uh, an issue of guilt on the individual level. It's about uh, seeing the structures that we're all part of and, and sort of lifting uh, the eye. And uh, it often helps to get men more involved in this kind of work for change. But also women feel discomfort, and that's another reaction. They feel stigmatized as if these figures sort of monitor them as the other, or the, the victim, or the, the sort of the second sex, and all that sort of, the, the, that they are not, um, they are being monitored as a problem, sort of problematic category. And they don't want that because it's, you know, I'm, I'm a film director, I'm, I'm very, very clever, I have these ideas, I, I work for quality, etc. And this is the same kind of indiv individual reaction. I mean, it's not about the individual, it's about the structures that you are part of. And it's very important to, to take that in, so you don't feel either accused or stigmatized by it. It's very, very crucial, otherwise you can't be able to act. And then there are a lot of both men and women, I would say, that are quite gender aware, but they don't know what to do with the knowledge. They don't know what to, how to use their awareness. There's a confusion of how to act. What tools are there? How can we change? And this is also sometimes a, a, a reason to feel discomfort, because you don't feel empowered by these figures. You feel sort of the, the opposite. And it's very important to feel that you are empowered by to, to, with these kind of uh, facts and figures and then know how can I use this to go ahead. So that's kind of the, the basic thing. So it's very important to, to understand the difference between the individual level. Of course, we all have our own lived experience as men and women in, in for instance, the film industry. And that, that's very important as well. But if we want to work with change, we have to look at the structural level, the patterns in organizations and society. And this is how you're going to interpret these kind of figures and these kind of reports. These are the structures. And structures can restrict individuals' actions, but they can also be challenged. They are not to be taken for granted. They are structures, and they are sort of made by us, and they are reproduced by us in everyday actions. So they are sort of performed. And it's very important to understand this, to, to be able not to feel too depressed or paralyzed by these kind of figures. And uh, another thing that is really uh, about how you think and, and your sort of understanding of this is the, I, I usually use these two concepts, uh, essence and conditions, because we are not very particular when we talk about gender differences. We often talk about gender differences and the misunderstandings are so uh, very uh, common because we talk about gender differences meaning completely different things. 
And in gender research, we are very particular with that we talk about gender differences with, from a power perspective. That is, that conditions are different. We are not talking about gender in an essentialistic way, that women and men are different by nature. And this is a big difference if you want to work for change. Of course, the conditions are different, and we will be, uh, there will be consequences that will make the lives of men and women different as a consequence of this. But the important thing is that it's about the conditions, not about the essentialistic ideas of gender. And this is very important in work for change, because if you believe that these differences are essentialistic, you won't um, be uh, very motivated to work for change. But if you see that there are power things going on, there are different conditions, uh, this is, makes it completely different. So in organizations, when we say that organizations are basically gendered uh, in, in, in their structures, we mean that what is important to ask is what ideals and norms and expectations do women and men meet when they enter an organization or an industry? In film, for instance, this is how we can understand what kind of differences they are sort of creating. And what are the consequences of these uh, differences in conditions? In terms of, for instance, uh, distribution of resources, we heard some of that, uh, distribution of health, uh, life quality, quality of film, I would say, quality of the production, opportunities, influence, etc. There are a lot of different entrances to looking at this. And if I, s I would say a few words about uh, culture, organizational culture, uh, as opposed to structure, because structure is often the, the things that we can measure and put figures on and sort of see different gender divides and, and we can count uh, the, the uh, money and etc. But there is also a very uh, large, uh, uh, the, the analysis is sort of uh, about organizational culture or industrial culture. And what we talk about in research and, and work for change today is a lot, we use these concepts of inclusion and exclusion to sort of uh, have a metaphor for culture. And all organizational cultures do this. There are processes of inclusion and processes of exclusion at the same time. And people are most often very unaware of these processes. They, are, they go on and we are take part of it, but we don't see it. But we feel it <laughs> and we know it. So this is how also the gender structures are internalized in a way. I heard a, a bit of the questions here about sort of putting the blame on women that they are not there. But to be included, uh, that's a feeling of fitting in, being welcome, being acknowledged, and to have a voice, for instance. These are four ways of, of sort of mapping that. And it's a big difference uh, if you sort of not feel that you fit in or you're, you don't feel welcome. I mean, you're there, but you're not really sort of welcome. And whatever you do, you're not acknowledged. And I would say that these figures are, so, are ha as, is about acknowledgement. I mean, they are really, really, uh, being very not acknowledging to women directors. And this affects us, of course, very much when we see it. And to have a voice, in this case, to have a voice often is to be able to make films and say something with them. So I, I would just like to make some parallel uh, into uh, to other contexts. Uh, for instance, these figures are, or these uh, um, results are from a study in the uh, academic world, in the academy where I am. It's, it's uh, a study that was done from applications, research applications. And this is about uh, how men and women are being evaluated. And I'm sure that that could be the same if we have applications for film. I haven't done this study, but the, the, this one. So, if a male uh, uh, researcher uh, 
is sort of doing research in a field over and over again and he sort of is very specialized in this field. He has these issues and he goes on and on. He would be uh, evaluated as very profound in this area. As there were women that were sort of doing a very sort of, they were into one field, one theme, and they were evaluated as being very, very narrow. And if we look at the, the contrary, uh, uh, a male researcher that was doing sort of this and that and this and that, different fields, this, different themes, the projects were sort of differing, he would be uh, evaluated as extensive. As the woman researcher doing the same thing, being sort of in a different, different, uh, sh sh changing the genre, she would be evaluated as shallow. <coughs> And then we have these uh, keywords, these <coughs> buzzwords that are in the academy. The excellence, for instance, is very uh, pop, have become very popular in science. It's to be, and we know that in film as well. To be a genius, we know that that is completely male gendered. There are only male gen geniuses, and we saw one running here before <laughs> in the first film. And also the excellence is very much in research, sort of reserved for male researchers. But women are ambitious. And this is how you know, she's very ambitious. So we have these different ways of naming uh, the, same, the same qualities, I would say. And if a, a male researcher is doing a lot of publishing with other researchers, and he's cooperating and publishing always with others, he, that would be a sign of that he has a strong network. While the woman researcher was evaluated as being, you know, what is she really contributing to in these um, journals and articles? Is she even contributing at all? She seems very dependent. She's always publishing with others. <laughs> And, these, and also, the, it was showed, because they did this uh, uh, with a clock, saw that men were always discussed, their applications were discussed longer than women. Even if it was a critical discussion, it was, it was taking more time. And women had fewer minutes, you know, either yes or no. And even if it's a critical discussion, people will remember, it's a kind of acknowledgement as well, they will remember his name to the next time, etc., etc. It, it, it makes a difference. And now if we change to another context, uh, that uh, it's a study about young managers in the banking sector in Sweden. And one of my colleagues did, did her PhD about these uh, young managers. She found that the word potential was very, very gendered the way we talk about potential in evaluations. And that could be, I mean, both, I guess, in applications and in critique, film critique afterwards, the film is done, if we do the parallel. What she found was that women are evaluated based on what they have already accomplished. When you sort of uh, uh, evaluate a woman, it's, you know, she's done this and this and this and this. While the young men were evaluated in relation to what they will accomplish in the future. Mm -hmm. You know, he is, you know, going to get this far, uh, etc. These kind of discussions about his potential in doing fantastic things 10 years ahead or 20 years ahead. And this also, of course, affects us. So she also found that women were talking about their hopes about their career, while the men were talking about their expectations when she interviewed them. So this is something that you can be influenced, uh, maybe as a parallel. So I will end with, with talking a few words about uh, workforce change. And I would say that, that there, this is also a field today that we know quite a lot of. There has been quite a lot of work for increasing gender equality and, and also in, in other I mean, in the diversity field. So we know quite a lot about methods. And there is, a, a, I mean, there are quite a few of, of 
issues that you have to take into account and discuss and, and sort of decide whether you what way you want to go. I mean, starting with defining the problem, and in a way, that's exactly what you have been starting in, in the, these reports, somehow to monitor, okay, this is the map, but the next dis discussion is, of course, what kind of problem is this? How can we define it? And then, who, who are present in this discussion? Who are invited to discuss and analyze? And what motives uh, should be used to, to sort of um, initiate work for change? There are, I will show you, a, a couple, I mean, there are different ways of uh, choosing the motives behind it. What support can we get in, 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 in uh, terms of uh, money, in terms of uh, power positions, it's in sort of um, official support from, from certain per parties, etc., boards of directors and managing, uh, etc. It's very important. And what are, what are the actors in, in the change processes? What methods do we use? What kind of resources do we have? And how do we evaluate the, the work for change? Because it's very important to go back and see what happened. And I would say that the problem is not gender equality, but the problem is gender inequality. So we start with a problem. Uh, the problem is inequality. And we, we know quite a lot of different ways of sort of framing what kind of dif inequalities there are. And, and discrimination, I mean, it's, it's often things that we can measure, that we can actually monitor, that we can uh, get statistics from in different ways. But acknowledgement, for instance, is kind of tricky. So we have to be, I mean, it takes methods to, to show that. We have harassment, sexual harassment, and other, I mean, that's a, a different story, but always, nearly always part of the story. And I would say that in these processes, there is a lot of things going on that shouldn't be going on at all. But what I want to say now is that what research has found recently in the last sort of 10 years is that these things with discrimination and sexual harassment and things, they are in a way visible processes that we can sort of describe and measure, etc. But what we have found lately is that a lot of the sort of inequalities are much harder to show and prove, and they are more about culture and this, what I said, inclusion and exclusion, because they are often non-actions. It's about invisibility and lack of, for instance, recognition. This is much harder to capture, much harder to prove, much harder to understand even. So what, what if we look back uh, and we look at the female film director, she can understand that, okay, it was of, because of these things that did not happen 20 years ago that I am not that person that I aimed at before. I was not invited, I was not uh, giving funds, I was not being acknowledged for, I didn't get credit for whatever I did, I was not sort of referred to in, in different um, papers, etc. And these non-actions together are actually the answer for these figures we have seen. And they are much harder to prove non-actions than actions in a way. So this is also another way of thinking. And it's of, of course about exclusion. That is often unaware uh, from the ones being excluding, but they are actually, I mean, they are actions of exclusion. So what about the motives for gender equality? I think that there are, these are some of the motives. But there is no right and wrong and no truths. This is about, um, to, I mean, this is what you have to discuss. For instance, in the film industry, in production, in, in TV, etc. What kind of motives do you want to use? I mean, you can actually say that it's about competence. We are not using the competence that we are training. I mean, it costs quite a lot for the society to have all these film schools. And what happens? We don't use it at all. It's a, uh, I mean, it's a waste. And we should really, but also when it comes to quality of film, 
I mean, all these good films that are not being made. Uh, it's, it's not being about being kind to certain, it's about missing out uh, good films, I would say. So the quality uh, argument is very, very. It could be about working conditions in, in, in when you do the shooting, the film, etc. What kind of, is it a sexist culture, is it not? I don't know, you have to find out. But it's maybe, and what I usually find when I work with this, is that there are, of course, a number of men that also are very critical to the kind of cult working culture they're in. They don't feel quite comfortable, for instance, with sexist jokes or sexist culture. They would like also to change. So it's about what kind of work environments do we want to have. Okay, the business case. I mean, that's about money, profitability. I'm sure that there are things to look into there. Uh, and it's uh, something that is a challenge as well. What kind of uh, costs do we have today? <laughs> and what costs, uh, what, what kind of profits are we missing out on, etc. Uh, it's a tricky motive because we often end up in discussing uh, profitability and money inside the kind of norms that we have today, that we are sort of in the conditions that we have today. And we often have to challenge them to be able to talk about this in a sort of more open way. It's about power and influence, and I, I would say uh, democracy, human rights, the, these are sort of Together, and I think that it's very, I mean, it's a, it's a big problem with the TV figures that you have shown to the German people. How can we accept it? How can you accept it? I mean, we have the same problem in Sweden. It's a big democratic problem. It's not okay. <laughs> I mean, really. So, but also the film industry have an image problem, I would say, and in Sweden this has been quite uh, uh, effective to show that, I mean, there is an image problem b by being very, very male-dominated, by being very, very sexist, by being very, very unequal, etc. And if you can sort of push uh, the, the media and, and, and others to monitor this, I think there are things to, to win also for them production companies, etc., to, to make changes, to show that they are modern. They are living in this, I mean, it's 2014, <coughs> almost 15 now. So, um, and when, when it comes to methods, I don't want to stop too much now because I, I should end, but I mean, I just want to say that there are um, a number of things that we have done, quite a lot. There is knowledge about it, there are, there are so, so you can't say that we don't know what to do. There are things to be done, and, and, and as have been mentioned, surveys, of course, the monitoring, training, uh, as we do now in this project that I have, it's gender theory, gender awareness, both for men and women in film, not only for women, but the men really have a lot to learn. And uh, mentoring programs, networks, projects, uh, uh, recruitment processes and quotas. I mean, there are different methods that have been used. We qu know quite a lot about it, and we, they can be sort of. They have to be used in a way that fits the specific context, the specific uh, uh, business, etc. But we also know that there is a lot of resistance uh, to gender equality and gender equality work. And this is often uh, expressed in everyday talk. And these are just examples of uh, very common uh, cultural resistance to gender equality. Uh, either it's a complete non-issue, something you don't talk about. And I would say that's a very passive resistance. If there's no talk going on, it's really, really something going on, I would say. Or you can say that this is no problem. We don't have a problem. That's kind of more active resistance, I would say. It's very often that you say that this is a matter of generations. You know, it is either no longer a problem because, you know, in the 70s they worked with these issues and now we moved along and, it's, you know, it's, it's sort of kind of something they did back in, uh, in the old days. Uh, or they say that it's a matter of generations as a natural development, you know. 
it will get better if we just wait. You, you know, the young kids now, they are so gender equal. So when they enter the film industry, everything will change. And so we don't have to do anything. We just wait. And this is very, very naive, of course. But it's a kind of resistance. And also, sometimes it exists that it's discrimination of men that we work for gender equality. And then the problem is really moving back to the analysis. With these figures, no. I would say no. It's not a discrimination of men. It's something that concerns us all, the structures that we are part of. But we have to take these discussions. We have to take these debates. But the, this kind of res resistance is present everywhere. So what are the resu poss possible results of gender equality work? Well, there are quantitative and qualitative changes that might happen. The quantitative ones would be increased numbers of women in film or film directors, or increased res resources uh, to women and women film directors. And the qualitative changes would be an impact, for instance, on the culture and film industry, but also when it comes to quality, new, innovative, and I mean, good films, better films maybe. I mean, that's what we have to say as another consequence, a broader spectra of, of films. So this is about knowledge, it's about power, and it's about action. And all these things need to be put together. Gender equality is a matter of competence and knowledge, definitely, and there's a lot of unawareness going on. But it's not only about knowledge. We can't train people to, to, to sort of um, demolish uh, inequalities. But, but it's also about uh, that you have to be willing to change. That it has to be actions, uh, etc. So uh, knowledge does not automatically lead to change. You have to sort of uh, see what can be done. So uh, I want to just uh, leave you with a, a couple of um, issues that I think is something that you could go on with from this excellent uh, uh, report, is to think about what motives for change are relevant even in uh, the German film industry uh, right now. What could be a way to sort of the right step to take? Is it sort of quality argument, the business case argument, the human rights argument, what kind of arguments would be a good platform? And there could be several, of course. But the second question is, of course, is there a, a shared understanding of the problem? Probably not. So that's kind of a work as well, to have this kind of uh, shared understanding. We have a problem, and it's a problem about uh, this and that. So you sort of articulate that. And what kind of resistance to change do you have to deal with? It's often important to be prepared for that. <laughs> and what actions are needed to, to change this? So these are sort of big issues, but important. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> be on the panel later so or if are there any questions short questions right now or should we take them later what do you say yeah. I don't know you don't have to be questions could be reflections or even you know comments <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's no racism in the world. <laughs> no, but I, I quite... 
you can be as sarcastic as you want to be, mm -hmm. but uh, there is a fact that we did make big steps in that area. And, uh, and also in gender equality, of course. To learn from them. I think that I think that uh, um, of course it's very interesting to think about, for instance, uh, child rearing and and uh, different uh, bodies and uh, but still the the issue of conditions is always there because it's sort of the issue of what under what conditions are we living in, in society and that is really even. Um, the, the, the father of liberal thoughts, uh, John Stuart Mill, said that not until we have equal conditions can we say something about the essential differences. And we don't have equal conditions. So in a way, when you work for change, if you work with the different conditions, that's quite enough. Because the different conditions will, of course, produce differences in different ways in our, in our bodies, in our self-understanding in our, our daily life in very, very, very uh, concrete ways. So it's more uh, an issue of uh, not, um, because as soon as you go into nature and the true nature of women and men, research has shown that it's very, very tricky to once and for all define what masculinity and femininity is as sort of a nature, because it, it's constantly shifting depending on kind of culture and, and, and time and class and, and ethnicity, etc. We will have different answers when we move around, also in history. And also if we compare even the European countries right now, we will have different visions of this kind of nature. And this is what is interesting, that we have all these parallel ideas of what nature is.